I have been going through and ranking MCU trilogies. I ranked the Iron Man trilogy, Thor trilogy, and Captain America trilogy. Now it's time to rank the three Avengers movies. How would you rank these movies? Let me know in the comments. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my ranking of the Avengers trilogy from worst to best. So the three Avengers movies that have been released to date, I'm going to go through and rank those movies. I'm excited to do that. Civil War is not in this ranking, even though it feels like an Avengers movie. It's a Captain America movie, and I have that in my Captain America trilogy ranking. So if you want to see where that falls, check that out here. This is strictly the Avengers movies. Now, having seen Infinity War, I'm excited to dive into this and I'm letting you know that if spoilers come out of my mouth for Infinity War, I'm just not going to stop them. So potential spoilers ahead for Infinity War. If you've seen the three Avengers movies that are out now, how would you rank them? Let me know in the comments. Coming in for me at number three, Avengers. I don't dislike the first Avengers movie. In fact, I love all three Avengers movies and I love this movie, but this movie definitely comes in at my number three and least favorite just in comparison to the other two that have come out. When I first saw this movie on the big screen, I was a little let down, but I think there were two reasons I was a little let down. Reason number one, I had an unrealistically high bar for this movie. I was so hyped and I was so excited for it that I just set the bar so unbelievably high. There was no way it was going to reach that. And number two, I saw it at a midnight showing and I was really, really tired. And then the second time I saw it, I really loved it. I had so much more fun with it. I really enjoyed it. And ever since then, every time I pop it in, I just... I love it. It's a great introduction to this team and how this team got together. I love Whedon's approach to it. It's like these characters that really have no business together and being in a film together suddenly are thrown together. And I just, I loved his approach to that, how he brought them together. Plus, I love Joss Whedon's writing and directing. He does a really good job with ensemble features like this so that not one character loses their identity. Each one has their time to shine and they all are just in just very important to the story. Now, I think, you know, Robert Downey Jr. was obviously clearly the lead. I, I just really think, you know, he was the most popular Avenger at that point, and so it made sense that he was like the lead role, got the most one-liners. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that away, what are you? Uh, genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. <laughs> really, I thought there was a terrific balance between all four of them, and then when you go see this, I mean, just the build-up, there was just this, oh, whew, moment, because it's, Chris Hemsworth, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, and Mark Ruffalo all just had a fantastic chemistry together. Could you imagine, like, if they did not play well off each other? Oh my gosh, where would we be in the MCU right now if these characters did not play off each other as well as they did? But these actors just formed a fantastic foundation here at the very beginning, and it was great. Number two. Age of Ultron. I really did like Age of Ultron a lot better than the first one. First off, I love the character of Ultron. James Spader did a great job. Now, the trailer sold him darker than he was, but that's okay. I mean, I just thought it was amazing to see, like, he's like this evil son of Tony Stark. It's just, I don't understand. Don't compare me with Stark. Like, he had Tony Stark's humor. He had Tony Stark's one-liners. Nobody has to break anything. Clearly, you've never made an omelet. You beat me by one second. And it made sense to me because Tony Stark invented him. So it makes sense that a lot of Tony's personality and jokes and stuff would make it in there. This was just a darker, eviler version of Tony Stark. So I thought that was really clever. Plus, James Spader, just the way that he talks, the cadence of his speech, he's really creepy. He was really creepy in season eight of The Office. He was really creepy in that other show, was it The Blacklist? The Blacklist? Okay, yes, Google's always my friend. The Blacklist, he was really good and creepy in the few episodes of that show that I saw. He just, he's a really terrific actor and he plays a certain role and he plays it extremely well. And I thought that was smart casting of Marvel and Joss Whedon to put James Spader in that role because to me, Ultron is just a strong villain. I really enjoyed his character. Plus, it was really cool to get to know Vibranium better. I mean, this is where we got to meet Claw. This is where we got to see all the Vibranium that he took. And this is where we got to see how versatile 
you know, vibranium really is. I mean, you have that little joke in the movie where he goes, the most versatile substance on Earth, and they make a frisbee out of it. You know, without an introduction to Wakanda at this point, we don't know much about vibranium. So this was the first film that gave us a clue, an indication of what vibranium really is. Now, I've been watching Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the animated Avengers show before this, so I was like, oh yeah, they could do a lot of cool stuff with vibranium. Vibranium is awesome! So, like, Marvel fans who know the backstory are really excited about that reference and the people who aren't so familiar with it are like whoa so you could do a lot more with that stuff what an interesting substance so it was a really great way to open the door and get us excited about future plot lines and plot points and stuff like that and it was a great introduction to scarlet witch and quicksilver really sad that quicksilver died but bold it was a really good choice because you know you can't kill off the main ones and at this point going in we all knew they were going to live anyway so we didn't have to up the stakes somehow so it was cool that Quicksilver and sad that Quicksilver was the one that bit the dust but unlike Coulson and unlike other superhero movies death meant something here and when he died he died and they did a good job building up the relationship between the Maximoff twins and Hawkeye how he really couldn't stand them but then really began to attach to them and became like this mentoring figure to them. And so when Quicksilver died, it was a weighty moment because of Hawkeye and because of that relationship. It wasn't a boo-hoo cry moment. It definitely wasn't that, but it had some weight to it. Number one, Avengers Infinity War. Seriously, is anybody surprised about that? Was anybody biting their fingernails wondering what I was going to put as my number one? Good. Because Infinity War, without competition, is my number one favorite Avengers movie. I love the Russo brothers. I think they are my favorite MCU directors. I mean, I love Whedon and all honor and respect do that guy. Yes, Whedon is awesome and ah, but the Russo brothers, oh my gosh, they are so good at the gritty action. They are so good at bringing a level of darkness to the films while keeping that Marvel humor and light that we love. They are so good with balance. It is un freaking believable. I mean, how many heroes were in this movie? A ton. And then they really smartly broke them into groups with Doctor Strange and half the Guardians and Spider-Man over on Titan. And you had that group with their story. And then, of course, you got Thor with Rocket Raccoon and Groot going off on their own adventure, which was just incredible. And then you have what's going on here on Earth with Captain America and his group that he's leading. I mean, they just did a really good job breaking this up into groups so you're not overwhelmed with all of these heroes. You're not overwhelmed with throwing them all here on the screen at the same time, giving them all equal screen time. And what was so amazing about it was... None of the characters got lost. None of the plot got lost. I, at no point was I confused about what was happening in the movie. I just never felt confused. None of the story for me got lost in cutting from one group of heroes to the next. I was able to follow it and just flow with it. It was amazing. And of all the Avengers movies, this one had the most impact. I highly believe that those who disintegrated in this movie, somehow it's going to get reversed in, in Avengers 4. I really do. And yet I don't feel like them disintegrating at the end of this movie is going to be a cheapened thing. But my gosh, speaking of that disintegration, the way I just, I froze, man. I froze when that happened. I just, I don't know what I expected. I mean, I, I, one thing that I predicted came true. I predicted Thanos was going to get all six Infinity Stones by the end of this. And then to watch these heroes disintegrate. I mean, it hurt to watch Bucky disintegrate. That's Captain America's heart right there. That's what the whole Civil War and Civil War was about. And all that work, and he just dies right there. My gosh, we had to watch the Black Panther disintegrate. But the worst was when Spider-Man disintegrated. And he collapses into Tony Stark's arms, and he's like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. You felt the fear in his voice. It's that same vulnerability that we got in Spider-Man Homecoming, where the roof collapsed on him and he's like somebody help before he realized nobody was coming and he had to man up and use all the power that he's got and lift that stuff and then to come back and have that vulnerability here in this moment and then you're watching Stark's worst nightmare happen where you you go back to Age of Ultron and he had that vision of all the Avengers dead around him and he just couldn't handle it well now in real life he watched Doctor Strange disintegrate he watched the Guardians disintegrate and more painfully he held his ward, Peter Parker, in his arms 
while this kid disintegrated and now he's got to go back and tell Aunt May if she hasn't disintegrated? I did some sort of online test and I was slain by Thanos. That makes me really sad. But that was heavy. I mean, of all the Avengers movies, this was the heaviest one. Now, there's this thing where we have the time stone, and so it feels like some of these deaths might be undercut. Like when Gamora died, like I just keep asking myself, I know there's a third Guardians. Could they really do a third Guardians without Gamora? I, I don't know. There's so many theories and questions and things running through my head. It makes my mind want to explode. But that's what I'm loving about Infinity War. It has me on my toes. It has me guessing in a way none of the other Avengers movies had me guessing. First Avengers, I knew nobody was going to die. Age of Ultron, I knew nobody big was going to die. Infinity War, I knew big characters were going to die. And now I'm going into the next one knowing they're not all going to stay dead. There's no flipping way. But who will stay dead? It's the fact that it actually has me with those questions and it has me on my toes like that that just gives this movie so much more weight than all the other Avengers movies. And it just... Oh, and then Thanos, Josh Brolin, gosh, I mean, it's just amazing what he brought to that character, but it's also amazing what the Russo brother, what the Russo brothers brought to it in directing it. It's amazing what was brought to it in the writing. I, I understood why he was doing what he's doing, but he's evil. He thinks he knows the way he doesn't know squat. Let's just say he knew more than any human being in the entire universe with all their knowledge combined. I bet you he would still then only know 3% of everything because it's a really big infinite universe. He doesn't know everything. He can't know everything. This is an evil act, plain and simple, but they did a really good job where you understand his motivation. You get where he's coming from. And it brought such a strength to his character. I don't know what more to say about Infinity War. I love that movie. It is, this is a movie to me where the stakes were high and the stakes were real. And even though a majority of this is probably going to get undone when we get into Avengers 4, there's still a real weight of how much is going to get undone. Who is going to come back and survive? But then a lot of these actors like Robert Downey Jr., especially Chris Evans, like aren't their contracts up? Like... Do they really want to renew? Can Marvel give them enough money to renew? Well, yeah, they, they probably could. But will they renew? So, like, there's real questions going into Avengers 4. And that makes me even more excited. So there it is. That's my ranking of the Avengers trilogy. How would you rank this trilogy? Let me know in the comments. While you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian and hit the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified the next time I drop a ranking video, a theological analysis, a movie review, or anything else I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbania.